Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of April 19th, 2021. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on Facebook Live and via streaming audio from the show's website weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify pages, also on the new Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we explain why HJR1, Representative Christ Tompkins' proposed permanent fund constitutional amendment, sets a trap for the PFD. Second, we explain our serious disappointment with the governor's proposal to spend the bulk of the federal funds coming to the state under the American Rescue Plan on new things. And third, we explain why there's a good reason not to rush on K-12 funding, as some in the House seem to be advocating. And now, let's join Michael. Let's kick things off here at the very beginning talking about uh, HJR1. Good morning, Brad. How are you this morning? Michael, I'm doing great this morning. How about you? You know, no complaints. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate mail, but other than that, I'm I'm all okay this morning. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I appreciate you drawing fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Over here, over here. Shoot me, not Brad. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about HJR1. I've heard a lot about it. I've been hearing lots of discussions, and you've had a time to analyze some of this stuff and talk about it. Uh, let's uh, take it from the uh, state's perspective here, well, what's important about it. So HJR1 is uh, Representative Jonathan Christ Tompkins' uh, proposed constitutional amendment uh, dealing with the permanent fund. Uh, and the reason it's important to talk about this morning is it's up for public comment today, midday, uh, in House Ways and Means. Uh, I filed comments yesterday, which you can find on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and elsewhere, uh, and I think it's important uh, for others to uh, to comment as, as well. Uh, HJR1 proposes one thing, um, and that is to constitutionalize the permanent fund draw. It moves all of the ERA uh, into the permanent fund corpus and then sets by constitution the, the draw rate at 5%. It does nothing with the PFD, unlike SJR1, which is Senator Wilikowski's proposed amendment, which both constitutionalizes the permanent fund draw and the PFD, HJR1, uh, uh, the one that's up for comment this morning, only constitutionalizes the, the permanent fund draw. And I think, I think it's a trap for the PFD, quite frankly, um, uh, what would happen under HJR1 uh, in its current form uh, is that uh, ERA would be rolled up into the into the corpus. The, the draw would be set at five uh, percent. ERA would no longer exist. The only thing coming out of the permanent fund would be the five percent draw. And what that does is take one of the funding mechanisms for our ongoing deficits, takes one of the funding mechanisms all completely off the table, the ERA overdraw, uh, takes that completely off the table and sets up this, this uh, competition, if you will, between permanent fund PFD cuts and um, uh, substitute revenues uh, as really the only way to fund government uh, uh, going forward. And I think, I mean, we've seen where that competition has ended the last five years. And I think that just sets the PFD for deeper and deeper and deeper uh, uh, cuts uh, as as we go forward. It is the same thing from my perspective as what others in the House majority at least see 
as the trap created by constitutionalizing the PFD and only constitutionalizing the PFD. There, they see that as a trap because you take the PFD off the table, you constitutionalize it, the only thing left is either cutting spending or um, uh, 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 substitute revenue. And while you know conservatives might see that as a good thing, you're, you're not going to get the House majority, those House majority, and probably a lot in the Senate, uh, Senate to, to agree with that. You're never going to agree with that. So they see that as a trap. They see that as a trap for government. Uh, to trap government spending, and in the same way that they see uh, a constitutional that only constitutionalizes the PFD as a as a as a trap, I see HJR one as a trap uh, to trap the PFD and 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 result in in deep and continuing uh, PFD cuts. My comments, uh, the comments we filed uh, yesterday um, are that that. We oppose HJR one as proposed. If amended uh, to to parallel SJR one, in other words, if amended to constitutionalize both the PFD and uh, the the permanent fund draw, then we would support HJR one. In right. essence, turning it into SJR one, turning it into Senator Willick. A companion bill, right? Yeah, proposal. a magic companion right. bill, right? Um, but it, it, in the absence of doing that. Uh, uh, as we said in our comments, we we uh, oppose it, um, and I think this is going to. I think there's going to be an interesting discussion in the committee, uh, in the Ways and Means Committee, over the issue. I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out. This is just this. This is just the first committee, so I'm not overly concerned. Uh, but but there's. I think there's going to be an interesting discussion about whether you constitutionalize both or just constitutionalize one. Uh, and HJR one certainly raises that issue. There's a second bill. Uh, up before the committee for public comment, uh, and that's H- HB 165, which is uh, JKT's representative uh, Christ Tompkins' proposal to move about 4.3 billion, if I remember, out of the ERA and into the corpus of the permanent fund. I oppose that as well uh, because it's just sort of another way of getting at uh, taking the ERA off the table and forcing this competition between the. Uh, between permanent fund cuts uh, and um, and substitute revenues, I, as we as I've talked about on the show before, I think we need a I think there's a I think there's a potential for, and I think we need to get to an all in solution, a comprehensive solution, which is constitutionalizing the the permanent fund draw, constitutionalizing the PFD, and agreeing on substitute revenues. You move any one of those forward first, um, uh, alone or separately. Um, and I think the other two uh, get left behind. You move any two of those uh, uh, forward first, and I think the other one gets left behind. It, it sort of goes back to the first lesson of politics that I learned back in my back in my youth, which is uh, when somebody says uh, they're going to get to your issue, we need to do this now, but they're going to get to your issue. Never trust that. Right, right. It's never. <laughs> it's called kicking the can down the road, which politicians are great at. Oh yeah, we'll get to that here uh, soon. Uh, yeah, mm, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's exact. That's ac- exactly what HJR one. So I would encourage people uh, that are listening uh, uh, to, as I've encouraged people that you know read the Facebook page uh, and elsewhere uh, to comment on HJR one. Has to be, you know, uh, it can be very simple. I oppose. Unless you amend to uh, to be the same as SJR one or something, or you can just say I oppose um, uh, because it you know puts the PFD at risk. But right. I encourage as many comments as we can as we can get in on the issue. Isn't HJR one kind of the um, I mean it kind of the dream bill uh, that a lot of these people would like to be able to say we're taking the PFD off the table completely, uh, and all this money now is going to be going straight to government. I mean that that's kind of the ultimate. Uh, you know they're already getting seventy five percent of the royalties, and they're they were supposed to get fifty percent of the earnings, and now they're like, nope, we're going to take it all, we're going to put it in there, we're going to take this whole draw uh, out of the permanent fund now instead of out of the earnings reserve, and we're gonna we're gonna spend all that money, and and I mean they could say that they're going to fight it out, and and that the permanent fund would that be on equal footing with everything else, but you and I both know that 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 it becomes an afterthought at that point. Yeah, I've gotten I've had some. Twitter exchanges uh, on on this issue uh, in the past week, and mostly it's people from Juno who say, you say exactly that. Uh, uh, we need to fix this issue first. We need to fix the the draw first, and then we'll get to the PFD 
uh, and that'll be easier to handle once we get this once we get this money off the table. Actually, that's also a position of some people in Anchorage that I've come across. Um, and it's you know, and so you sort of press on that issue a little bit, and basically it's. Uh, it's, it's, I want mine first. <laughs> I want, I want to secure government funding first, right. which, uh, which, uh, the, this, the fixing the PFD draw or permanent fund draw does. I want to secure that first. And then, and then, yeah, well, I'll think about your issue, but, but give me mine first. And as I say, the first lesson I learned in politics way the heck back long ago was when somebody says that, watch out. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. Pay attention. Their their lips are moving. Apparently, you should be watching that closely at that point. Um, all right, so uh, HJR1 testimony today. Um, I'll see if I can find the uh, – I'll see if I can find a, uh, an email address or a phone number for folks to call. Do you know what time it's supposed to be at today? Uh, I think it's 1130, Michael. Okay. Uh, House Ways and Means. And the, and the email address is house.ways.com. And spelled out a n d dot means at akledge dot gov. Uh, house dot ways dot and dot means at akledge dot gov. All right. right. I posted that up in the chat room for folks uh, uh, for comments uh, on H A R one. And so, if they want to do that, of course, it always happens right in the middle of the day when everybody has to be working and everything else. But you know. Which is which is why emails uh, and they'll take comments, you know, through right uh, this evening or tomorrow. Which is why emails, I think, are uh, are 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 useful. I have thumbed through the emails, the comments that were uh, filed on uh, SJR one, and they were very good. They were very helpful. Uh, Sixty, seventy of them or so, um, and I and I think that's as good a way to. Uh, to persuade, maybe better. Uh, given the, when you when you call in, you see some legislators, you know, working on their phones, doing texts on their phones. Right. Um, maybe a better to, to, to way to reach hearts and minds than uh, than uh, than calling in. So. All right. Well, that seems to be number one, which gives us an easy out into number two, which is last week we had a full discussion on using the ARP and the CARES Act monies to try and bridge this gap in our fiscal problem uh you know whether we should use it all at once whether we should uh whether we should use a step down approach and the governor has jumped into this now and said oh no what we need to do is spend 85% of it on new spending um which what i mean we what we've got a problem here <laughs> what that was exactly my reaction what wait Wait, what? It was, yeah. I mean, that was that was exactly the process I went through. Um, so, so the the background is this: we've got roughly over the next two years, we've got a three billion dollar, depending upon whether you use PFD or POMV fifty fifty or the current statutory PFD, a three billion to a three and a half billion dollar uh, deficit. That's the deficit we're facing in FY twenty two and F, the 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 year that we're working on now in FY twenty three. Uh, the federal government is spending us a bi- is sending us a billion dollars in uh, in in ARP money, American Relief Act or American Relief Plan uh, uh, money, and and the theory behind that money going to the states and the localities is, hey, you guys had a revenue hit um, from from the pandemic. We we understand that we the federal government understand that we understand that you that you may be underfunded as a result of that, um, and so here's some money to help fill in that hole. Um, and so, you know, the, the money can be spread over two years. And so you're looking at a billion dollars against a three billion dollar, three billion plus billion dollar deficit. And you go, thank you. That's not going to fill in our hole completely, but that helps. Uh, uh, you know, here we're going to throw this in the hole, you know, make the hole smaller, make the deficit smaller, make the make the PFD cuts or the alternative revenues or whatever the heck it is, however ever we're otherwise going to fill that hole, at least to fill it a little bit. Fill it up a little bit, so we don't need to, you know, make as make as deep of PFD cuts or, or or develop as many uh, or as much substitute revenues. And then the governor comes out and proposes, as you say, to use eighty five percent of it uh, for new things, new shiny toys, uh, instead of filling up the hole. He only uses a uh, hundred and forty million dollars of the one billion dollars. 
to, uh, for uh, for filling up the hole. The rest of it goes to shiny new toys, and I and I just don't understand that. And, and we can talk about it more after the break. But I just I just I just don't understand logic uh, of uh, of what we're doing here. Right. Well, and I think that at that point you have to be like, wait a second. Um, the well, again, two billion dollar deficit. We could spread this out and make the cuts that are necessary to bring the government back online and to and make it as efficient as possible before we start delving into these ideas of new revenue or pulling out more of the dividend or pulling out more from the permanent fund itself and all this other kind of stuff. And this was the glide slope. This was the glide slope that would allow us to do it. But instead, we've got $880 million in brand spanking new stuff. And, and, and basically, yeah, and new stuff that we have to support then. I mean, new, new programs that we've created, new stuff that we have to support going forward. I you know, it's um, you can view this. You can easily view this as 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 rather than maintaining a billion dollars of PFDs over the next over the next two years. If you assume that we're otherwise going to fill that hole with PFD cuts, rather than maintaining a uh, billion dollars of PFDs, we're going to take eighty five percent of that billion dollars that otherwise could be paid out in PFDs. We're going to take eighty five percent of that and spend and spend it on new stuff. He's 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 creating an eighty five percent cut uh, in uh, in that billion dollars that otherwise would go uh, otherwise could go to PFDs and it's just uh, it's I, I don't I don't get it I mean three hundred twenty five million of that is is call is 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 being allocated to quote build Alaska infrastructure investment. Water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure investments leverage local and other funding using matching grant programs. Well, two things. One, we've got we've got a huge backlog of 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 deferred maintenance. Uh, right. We don't need be we don't need to be building <laughs> new things. We need to be maintaining the stuff we have that's otherwise falling apart. And second, is he not following what Congress is? What the president's doing? The president has is 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 proposing a big uh, uh, two plus billion dollar infrastructure program. Right, right. I mean, that, that's going that, that's going to be coming down the, the pike. So we don't need to be taking the money that was spent that was intended to backfill our deficit. We don't need to be taking that money and spending it on infrastructure. If we if if we do, uh, there's more infrastructure money coming down the pike from the Fed. Uh, when I saw this graph at first thing, Brad, all I could think of is what? I mean, just, I, I, I'm just like, how can the, the, the hole, the hole, you can see it. It's like the black hole. It's like sucking us all in and you're like, oh, well, I'm just going to go over here and build new stuff. This makes total sense. Yeah, it was, I mean, I could sort of, I can sort of see 90, 10, uh, you know, ninety percent going to to fill the hole, ten percent for for new stuff. I could sort of get my mind around that. And, and when he started talking about the Alaska, what's now categorized as the Alaska Tourism Revitalization, at one hundred and fifty million dollars, I thought, okay, so he's going to take fifteen percent of it and focus it on on that industry that's been hard hit uh, by that segment of the, of the state's industry that's been hard hit. It's about 15% of the, of the billion dollars. Okay. 85%. All right. Maybe, but, but yeah. And then he comes, but then he comes out last Friday and the list goes on. I mean, the, the tourism re- revitalization, it turns out is, is only a small part of, of this, of the 85% that he's, that he's putting on, putting into new programs. And it's, um, it, you know, I, I, this is something Bill Walker would do. This, this right. is something right. that a governor that wants to, you know, build things and you know be remembered for all the money he shoveled out the door and responsive to, you know, various uh, 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 special interest pressures to to do this and do that. This is something that that I would have expected out of out of Bill Walker, or maybe going back, maybe to maybe to Tony Knowles, right? Uh, but this is this is not. This is not a program that a fiscally conservative governor trying to deal with the hole that we're in, who talks, who's talked about the hole we're in, trying to deal with the hole that we're in. It's not the, this is not the response that you would, you would expect out of a, out of a governor uh, who's, who's, who claims to be fiscally conservative. We are continuing now with Brad Keithley. 
We're talking about the weekly top three, and we're in number two already. We're a little ahead of the schedule uh, this week, which is good, because we're talking about the governor's now plan to take this billion dollars in ARP money, which could be used to soften the blow, soften the soften the gap, uh, as we try and cut back on the size and scope of state government with a two two and a half three billion dollar deficit coming forward. But instead of trying to fill the hole, he instead is proposing uh, 85% of this money be spent on new stuff. Now, all I got to ask is, Brad, where is the governor that was all about cutting back the size and scope of government? Where is the Mike Dunleavy from 2018 who proposed a budget that was, you know, where income kind of or got close to matching outflow and, uh, you know, and we were, you know, we were at least taking a look at that. Where is that guy? You know, I'm going to take a lot of heat for this, Michael, but I'm going to say he's turned into Bill Walker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, you said it during the break, but this really, these actions are very much reminiscent of a Bill Walker who's looking to, you know, to build a legacy instead of, you know, being fiscally responsible. Well, it's, it, it, it not only not only build a legacy, but in Walker's case, that's true because of the because of the LNG line. But but it, it's it's reminiscent of a governor who is succumbing to the push and pull of special interests, who say, "Hey, you got all this money. I want a little bit of this, and I want a little bit of that, and I you know I've got a construction company that's got trucks uh, sitting in a parking lot someplace. I want to go build infrastructure, um, and and you know my my tourism business is down. I want I want some help with that. It's 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 a governor who's got a big pot of money all of a sudden who you know ha- having now uh uh done the PPP program the loan program uh to to make to help small businesses get over the get over the hump of the pandemic having seen the federal government uh you know uh do individual uh uh, uh grants uh ch- write checks to individuals and so we're sort of over the hump of, of individuals being concerned, having this pot of money now, and uh, and saying, "Boy, what can I do with it?" And and every, all the special interests, you know, having suggestions about what to do with it, and just forgetting. <laughs> I mean, it. I, I'm sure he didn't, but but just just not addressing the fact that we've still got this three billion dollar hole over the next over the next couple of years, three plus billion dollar hole, and a billion dollars every year thereafter, uh, and this money. Uh, was was you know ha, was was legislated was appropriated by the federal government to help fill that hole not to go build new stuff new stuff I mean part of it I think we were saying over the break part of it thirty two percent of it three hundred twenty five billion or million dollars um, he's got allocated to build Alaska infrastructure investment water sewer and broadband infrastructure investments leverage local and other funding using matching grant programs well we've got a bill there's a bill in Congress right now. President Biden's proposed infrastructure bill that will do exactly that, that will send money out to, to build those sorts of things. And we got a very powerful congressional delegation uh, in uh, Senator Murkowski and Senator Sullivan and, and Representative Young who are, who are going to help drive a, a portion of that money to come to Alaska. Uh, we don't need to be spending money. Um, I, I mean, I, I may have said this before the break or I may have said it during the break. This is PFD money. This is money that otherwise can help go to offset PFD cuts that otherwise will need to be made to, to, to balance the budget over the next couple of years. We, we, we've got federal money coming in for infrastructure. We don't need to be sending what's the equivalent of PFD money out to contractors to, to, to build infrastructure. If anything, if we were going to spend it on anything in that regard, it should be spent on deferred maintenance. I mean, the billion-dollar-plus backlog we've got – in deferred maintenance in the state, stuff falling apart. Right. Uh, that that's what we could spend it on, if anything. But we really ought to use it. We ought to be using it for what the, the federal government intended it for, which is to help fill backfill the hole uh, in revenues we've suffered over the last few years. I'm looking at this chart that you put up on your Facebook page, and it's uh, basically it, it breaks down the allocation of what this 1.02 billion dollars would be spent on. I mean, general offset, fund offset, which is basically filling the hole. He's proposing $139 million. Okay, that's 14% of it. So that leaves 86% being spent on basically new stuff. And as you said, Build Alaska is the one he was just talking about for infrastructure, $325 million. But then he's got three other things here. The Alaska Tourism Revitalization. Okay, as you said, I could see that. 
trying to pump the tourist industry. That's one thing. But $80 million for protecting Alaskans. Okay. What, what, is, what does that mean? Economic recovery and innovation, $325 million. What exactly? I mean, what, again, what are you trying to do here? If you could just get out of the way and fill the hole in the, in the, in the budget, guess what? The economy would recover. If you would open up, the, get the state as open as possible, get out of the way, let, let, let private sector innovation happen, the government doesn't need to stimulate that stuff. Yeah, and, and exactly, Michael. And this, and, and again, what, what's really fundamental to me is this is money that otherwise would pop up as PFDs. This is money that otherwise uh, uh, would offset uh, cuts that we're going to the cuts that will be made in the PFD or other or other substitute revenues uh, in order to fill to fill the budget hole. And so, what you're the, the way you really should visualize this is we're taking your PFD money. A billion dollars that otherwise would go to Alaska citizens and PFDs. We're taking your PFD money, and we're directing it instead to government spending um, uh, in these categories. Eighty-six percent of it to government spending in these categories. And, and and you know, after all of the federal funding that's already come into the state, after the the, the federal funding that the additional federal funding that's coming into the state under the ARP. Uh, I mean, there, there's a, a slug of it that goes to K through 12 that we'll talk about in a second. There's a slug of it that goes to local government. There's a slug of it that's going to come in as grants to various uh, various agency and various projects in the state. After and, and then we have the infrastructure bill, the president's infrastructure bill that's, that's before Congress. After all of that federal money that's coming in, can't we just spend a portion of it to fill to fill the hole? Right, the, the the budget hole well, we've if, got, and that's what this billion dollars is for. Right, if you want economic recovery and innovation, give people a full PFD. You'll see what happens. That money will flow into the economy. You will have economic recovery. You will have some people will take those things and start a business and build something new and everything else. Put that money in Alaska's hands. Do not leave it in the hands of bureaucrats and do-gooders who believe that somehow they can think and work and 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 plan and innovate better than the free market can. Yep, exactly right. And but but that's exactly what this is. I mean, to go back to your initial question, what happened to that governor that we elected uh, in 2018? He's turned into somebody else. Right. This this proposal is is Bill Walker's proposal. This proposal is right. not the Dunleavy that ran in 2018's proposal. Do you want to comment on Charlie's comment about the fairness of your broad-based tax based on the federal income tax when only 40% oh, sure. of Alaskans pay federal income taxes? I'll oh, hit sure. you with that. Go ahead. So the, a flat tax uh, based on AGI would cover all Alaskans. Not just all, not just those that pay federal income tax, right? I mean that's that's a that that's the first version of Senator Begich's bill to to tax only those who are paying federal income tax to do it as a surcharge to those paying federal income tax. A broad based tax based on a flat tax based on AGI would cover all Alaskans, and it's a great deal uh, for for the for the for the lower eighty percent for the for the non top twenty percent because they get back more in in PFDs. Than they pay out in in taxes. I mean, the tax rate, depending upon what you're trying to raise, let's say the tax rate is three percent. The lowest twenty, the lowest twenty percent are getting like twenty percent of their income returned by through through not having PFD cuts. Uh, the, the middle age, the middle twenty percent are getting like eight percent of their income returned by not having PFD cuts, and they're paying three percent uh, back in taxes. So it's a gain for doing it that way. Is a gain for uh, the um, the the lower eighty percent. Usually, I get attacked by people who are looking out for the bottom twenty percent or the or the next twenty percent, the the low middle, next twenty percent. We're saying, oh wait, you're gonna you're gonna have them pay taxes that uh, income taxes. They shouldn't be doing that. I mean, they don't have to do that under the federal system. And my response to that is, right. look, you're getting the PFD back. Uh, it's not it's a substitute for the PFD, and you're gaining. You're, you're, it's a much more equitable tax. Everybody's bearing the same percentage, and and you're gaining on it uh, by by getting the PFD back. I, I seldom get attacked by people who claim that you know I'm I'm burdening the top forty 
<laughs> top 40 percent unfairly yeah well you know anyway i think that uh, the, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and everything else but regardless of that i do agree with machiki on the fact that that needs to be the last i mean that's the last thing that's the last thing on the checklist you know let's get the state's sp- uh, spending uh de- organized efficient and cut down to where we can cut it Let's then get a PFD enshrined and let's get a spending cap. And then and only then can we talk about new revenues because otherwise they're just going to spend it anyway. So, well, um, yeah, 30 we've seconds. had this discussion before, Michael. It, it, all three have to go at the same time. The, the restoring the PFD, constitutionalizing the PFD, uh, 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 constitutionalizing the, the permanent fund draw, uh, and spending cap slash uh, substitute revenues. They all need to go at the same time because otherwise somebody's ten, getting gained. Ten gain. seconds. Some, somebody's getting gained. All right, let's move on to number three. We've got about two minutes here. The K-12 through funding is at issue partially because of cuts to the university and other things, but you got some commentary on the K-12 education. Well, so there's $300-plus billion that's come. We, we spend, what, well, we spend about a billion three on billion two uh, on uh, on K through 12 every year, there's about 300 uh, uh, million dollars that's coming into the state again under the ARP that's directed to K through 12, and and a portion of that it's not clear yet because we don't have guidance yet, but a portion of that can be used to offset that 1.2 billion. What the legislature is, what some of the legislature are proposing to do is go ahead and 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 move up in time. The K through 12 funding pass a bill right now at that 1.2 billion dollar level, and and lock in K through 12 funding at 1.2 billion dollars without taking into account that 300 million dollars is coming in from from the ARP or maybe it's 400 million dollars is coming in from from the ARP. That money that's coming in from the ARP could be used to reduce the K through 12 funding that the legislature has to do again, freeing up more money. For uh, for the PFD or reducing the amount of PFD cuts that have to be made, right. I don't understand why those in the legislature who are trying to, you know, run through K through 12 spending quickly, uh, are doing that without sitting there and waiting for guidance on the ARP money that's coming into K through 12, uh, and uh, and and potentially use that as an offset to reduce the state's uh, obligation over the next two years. <laughs> Me either, except for a fact that, oh, look, more money. That's exactly what it is. You know, Brad, when I first saw this whole commentary on uh, now we're going to issue school, you know, layoffs again, which it just irritates the hell out of me. This whole thing with teachers and layoffs and pink slips. It's so much political theater, the way that it's set up to specifically put pressure on the legislature near the end of the session to make sure that the schools get exactly what they want so that they don't have to do that. First of all, that irritates me. Second of all, to know that they're going to get $368 million or whatever it is from the ARP and its uh, and its addition. And instead of using it to offset, of course, the first idea is not to offset the rest of the budget. But, you know, again, we we got extra money. This is a way to cut into that. This could cut into, you know, 10, 12, 15, 18% of this deficit that we've got. Instead, we're going to spend more. We're going to spend everything that we wanted and then we're going to spend on top of that this extra 360 million. There is no thought of reducing the size and scope of it or using it to offset to pay for PFDs and because I mean that's just not even it's not even on their on their radar as a thought. And that just it just irritates me so badly. You know, I can understand it not being on some, on the radar of some in the legislature. I can I can appreciate that. But this governor Told us he was a fiscal conservative. This governor ran on on as you said, reducing the size and scope of government. I can't. This governor ran on saying he's going to restore the PFDs. Here's a perfect opportunity, fell out of the sky opportunity, uh, to restore at least a portion of the PFD to to at least fill a portion of the hole that's otherwise going to be filled uh, with additional PFD cuts. I God, I'd be all over this. You know, saying, saying, yep, I'm following through on my pledge. We're going to be able to use this money to fill the hole. We're not going to have to do as many PFD cuts. You know, guys, I'm, I'm helping you dig out of the hole. Instead, he's proposing to give 85% of it away to, to shiny new toys. Here's, right. the thing. Here's the thing on K-12. through 12. You, you see the headline in the, 
in, in the ADN, it says slow work on state budget by lawmakers could again lead to temporary layoffs of some teachers. But you, you have the patience to read down through the uh, read down through the article, and, and, and at the very end, it has this. School districts across Alaska will receive aid from, re- from the recently passed American Rescue Plan, and Stedman said that money, plus the legislature's firm pledge of unchanged funding, should give school districts enough confidence to avoid layoffs. Brown, and Brown, the spokesman for the, for the ASD, Anchorage School District, said the federal money is enough for ASD to have that confidence that, 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 that they can avoid layoffs. So I don't, I don't, I mean, so, so the ASD, the biggest school district in the state says, we're not concerned about this. Right. The federal money is going to be enough to, to, to get us over the hump. We see, you know, we see that, that that's, that that's going to be enough uh, to tide us over. And, and so I just, I don't, I, I don't get this rush in the legislature to, you know, we got to do something. We got to do something. We got to do something. Oh my God, you know, there's layoffs out there. No, there aren't. The biggest school district in the state told you there aren't. Right. So, you know, take your time. Let's understand what the what the K through twelve money that's coming from the ARP, the three hundred plus million dollars that's coming from the ARP. Let's understand if that can be used to backfill the one point two billion that we that we normally spend on K through twelve, reducing the amount of state funds that we need to put toward it for a couple of years, help us get out of this hole. Uh let's let's take the time to do that. But there's some in the legislature who just want to keep on keep on going. Right. Well, and here's the thing: it's three hundred and sixty million dollars uh, in back funding from the for the education. You've got a billion. Even if you took another three hundred and fifty million to match that uh, for what was going on in education, I mean, that's that's the full that you could pay a full dividend if you cut those two things out of the budget and 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 offset it. You could pay a full dividend based on that with what's going on. I mean, it it it's it's right there. You made a campaign well, promise. And, and there's another 200 and some odd million dollars that's coming into local government. So can we use that money to to offset some of the state funding that otherwise would have to go to local government? We still have to face the fact there's a, that there's a $3 billion deficit over the course of the next couple of years. Right. And, 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 and you know, we're going to have to deal with that. But, but by gosh, at least think about, you know, using some of this money to backfill – not not some use this money, all this money to backfill that hole before you before you you know before you even start to think about about new programs or or new shiny toys that you can go out there and and promise to special interest groups. This reminds me of Natasha's comment on, oh, we got all this new money. How are we going to spend it? And I'm just like, my God, you people! You mean you just the handwriting is on the wall, and yet you're still like, oh, look, more money. We can go out to eat now. I mean, we're broke and the, and the mortgage payments pass due, but, you know, hey, look, I just found a $100 bill in my jeans from the wash. Let's go out to eat. I mean, like, really? I mean, this is your answer? I, I, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm shocked, Brad, but at this point, I'm just, I'm beyond that at this point. I am shocked at, at, at that Governor Dunleavy is in this trap. I am shocked at what Governor Dunleavy has done. I mean, as you said, when both of us saw that chart last week, it was, wait, what? I mean, I am shocked that, that a guy in, who in 2018 ran on being a fiscal conservative is, is leading the bandwagon on using 85% of the billion dollars to, for shiny new toys. Yeah. That does shock me. It, uh, it's frustrating, my friend. I don't know. We just keep pumping the pump and nothing's coming out. And I don't know. what <laughs> My arm's getting tired. Let's just put it that way. My arm is getting tired. Uh, All right. Well, Brad, thanks for uh, following up on this and paying attention to these issues and uh, keeping us in the loop on it. As always, uh, I appreciate it. I don't know if the listeners do or not, but I always appreciate the conversations because uh, they make me think, and I I appreciate that. Well, Michael, uh, thanks for having me. And and one last time, file comments, file an email on HJR1. Don't let them trap trap the PFD. Yeah, absolutely. Get it done today before 1130. House.ways.com. Dot and dot means at Alaska or at ak.gov. Uh, k, AK gov, AK ledge.gov. Sorry, there we go. I was going to get it. I was going to get it. <laughs> Man. All right. It's posted, in the, it's posted in the chat room. It is posted in the chat room. Thank God I typed it out while I could think and talk at the same time. Brad, thanks so much. We appreciate you calling in today. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. 
Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.